Hello viewers, in this video from Captained, I, Dr. Stella, will be describing and teaching you the process of amelogenesis. As you can look at this board, I have mentioned the stages of life cycle of ameloblast on the right side, which I have already discussed in my previous session. So at this point, I am urging you to watch that video so that, you know, you can understand the process of amelogenesis in a much simpler manner. Now, as the name suggests, amelogenesis is basically your formation of enamel. This process is divided into two steps mainly. Number one, the deposition of your enamel matrix proteins, which is basically the organic component. And second is the mineralization of this matrix. Okay, now this enamel matrix proteins can be divided into two main groups. Number one, the amelogenins and number two, the non-amelogenins, which further consist of ameloblastin. enamelin, your tuftalin and recently one more protein has been reported which is the amelotin. So these big proteins constitute your non-amelogenins group. Now the amelogenins constitute about 90% of this enamel matrix. Now the mineralization of enamel itself is such that the final product of the enamel contains only 4% of this organic matrix while 96% is your inorganic portion. So this is the composition of your final enamel. This process of amelogenesis is further divided into pre-secretory phase where your inner enamel epithelial cells are differentiating or let me state in simpler terms they are getting ready for the formation of enamel that is they are differentiating to form ameloblast. In the second or secretory stage these ameloblasts are actually secreting your enamel matrix proteins such that your whole thickness, the full thickness of your enamel is deposited. Okay, the enamel matrix proteins are synthesized in this stage. Now in the maturation stage, this enamel matrix proteins degrade. As I mentioned earlier, only 4% of the organic matrix remains. So the enamel matrix degrades, which is followed by subsequent mineralization to form your final enamel. Now I'll be discussing these three stages one by one and I'll correlate it with the life cycle of ameloblast. Now in the pre-secretory stage, as I mentioned in simpler terms, your inner enamel epithelial cells are getting ready because they ultimately have to deposit and secrete your enamel. So this stage corresponds to two stages of the life cycle of ameloblast, the morphogenic and your organizing stage. Now as the name suggests, in the morphogenic stage, the morphology of your final crown is established. Apart from this, the inner enamel epithelial cells are low columnar in shape. Okay, these are your inner enamel epithelial cells. This is just a simplified diagram. Okay, so these are low columnar in shape. Number one, your shape of the crown is decided. And number two, your inner enamel epithelial cells are low columnar in shape. Now in the organizing stage of the ameloblast, which is also known as the differentiation, these inner enamel epithelial cells will now differentiate and elongate to form your ameloblast. Another change seen in your uh, organizing or differentiating stage is that the differentiation or the formation of ameloblast will actually interact with the dental papilla cell and 
induce them to form the dentin forming cells called the odontoblast so by the end of this uh, pre secretory stage a thin layer or the first layer of dentin is deposited and deposition of this layer is extremely crucial for the deposition of the enamel thus by this point i think you have understood that there exists a mutual interaction between the ameloblast and the odonto now in this second or the secretory phase the actual deposition of enamel begins by this stage you remember that the first layer of dentin has been laid down by the odontoblast now here the inner enamel epithelial cells have also differentiated into ameloblast right so as the deposition of the first layer so this is your ameloblast cell as the deposition of the first layer of enamel takes place your cell is pushed away from the basement membrane now this gives rise to ameloblast forming a cytoplasmic process which is known as the tooms process right so this process again is divided into two portion the proximal portion and the distal portion and this process is divided from your cell body proper by a distal terminal bar so initially when the enamel deposition begins the tooms process has only a proximal portion and no distal portion right so as the first layer of enamel is deposited your ameloblast are moving away from your basement membrane a basement membrane right here so the first layer of enamel that is laid down is without any rods and is immediately mineralized right so remember the first layer of enamel that is laid down by the ameloblast is immediately mineralized and therefore it does not contain any rods so now after the deposition of the first layer of enamel the proximal process of the tooms process gives out a distal process too right i want you to appreciate here at this point that since the proximal and the distal portion are both facing in different direction so the enamel deposited by them too are facing the different directions so the enamel or the matrix protein deposited by the distal process forms the enamel rod while the enamel deposited by the proximal process forms your interrod substance right now as this process continues uh you know eventually the tooms process thins out as the ameloblast elongates your tooms process will thin out and eventually disappear so now these spaces that are now left are filled by organic matrix and form your enamel sheath thus by this point we have seen the formation of rods the interrod enamel and the enamel sheath so eventually at the end as it diminishes now your tooms process if you can recollect rem uh, they resemble the initial morphology of the ameloblast which actually started with the deposition of enamel so again the enamel that is deposited here will be rodless because since there is no tooms process there will be no differentiation in the directions so remember the first and the last layer of enamel laid down is rodless in nature while in the middle because of the different direction of the proximal and the distal process there is formation of rod interrod substance as well as enamel in sheath now after the secretory process and prior to the initiation of the maturation or mineralization there is a stage which is near transition stage in which the ameloblast reduce in height and about 50% of the ameloblast undergo apoptosis or the programmed cell death and the organelles which are responsible for protein synthesis the organelles such organelles they undergo 
phagocytosis. This is the transition stage. Now in the third or final stage, that is the maturation stage, the degradation of the organic matrix commences followed by the subsequent mineralization. Therefore, very simply, it corresponds to the maturative stage of the life cycle of the amyloblast. So in this stage, the amyloblast, they alternate and have, you know, smooth, disruffled and smooth borders. You know, once this will have a smooth border, the next time it will have a ruffled border. And this is actually a cycle which happens about every seven, five to seven hours in a day. And this cycle is known as modulation. That is the alternate ruffled and the smooth borders which are exhibited by the amyloplast in a cyclic manner is known as modulation. So let me explain in detail the ruffled and the smooth amyloblast. So this is your amyloblast with your ruffled end. While this is your amyloblast with a smooth border. So in this ruffled border amyloblast, there is a tight crystal junction while the proximal junction is leaky. This is your proximal junction. This is your distal junction. And the opposite is present in your smooth border amyloblast. That is, the proximal junction is tight while your distal junction is leaky. So now let me tell you about ruffled amyloblast. So now the peculiarity is that it contains lysozymes and therefore it has an endocytic activity obviously for the degradation of the organic matrix now the matrix the organic matrix which is degraded by this ruffled amyloblast enters into the smooth amyloblast via this leaky distal junction so very simply this degrades and this takes up the degraded matter because of this distal leaky junction. Now, you also note that the distal, now in the ruffled border, we have, very important, we have a calcium pump which help in the crystal growth. Thus, the two purposes which are happening, or the two processes which are happening in this process, that is the destruction of the organic matrix is taking place and apart from this, the mineralization is also taking place. Now, this pump is absent in your smooth amyloblast. Therefore, this modulation becomes an extremely pro extremely important process. And by this, we end the process of enamel formation or the amylogenesis. I hope you have understood the process. And in case you have any questions, you can comment in the section below.